Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Lion's Table. Let's take a moment to enter into the presence of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let God's word, which is truth, fill us and give us strength. Let us contemplate his great love for us, his sacrifice on the cross, his mercy, grace, and promise of eternal life through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the word who was at the beginning, was with God and is God. To a worldly man, our journey here seems meaningless. But no man is meaningless in Christ, and no man is greater than Jesus Christ, the word who was at the beginning, was with God and is God. All things were made through him and for him. Nothing is bigger than his word, for it is truth and life. Nothing is greater than Jesus Christ, the word, and his word, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ, has no greater thing. No man, no building, no government, no expert, no doctor, no scientist. Amen and amen. Remember, this world is in an abnormal, fallen condition. People tend to think that chance governs the universe. Events may seem to occur randomly with little or no meaning. People who view the world this way have overlooked one basic fact, the limitations of human understanding. What you know of the world you inhabit is only the tip of the iceberg. Submerged beneath the surface of the visible world are mysteries too vast for you to comprehend. This is why you must live by faith and not by sight. And therefore, we are always confident, although we know that while we are home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We're confident then and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. 2 Corinthians 5 verses 6 through 8. What does this mean for us? It means the believer is not only well assured by faith, that there is another and happier life after this one is ended, but that he has good hope through grace of heaven as a dwelling place, a resting place, a hiding place. In our Father's house are many mansions whose builder and maker is God. The happiness of the future state is what God has prepared for those that love him. Everlasting habitations, not like the earthly tabernacles, these poor cottages of clay in which our souls now dwell, that are moldering and decaying, whose foundations are in the dust. The body of flesh is a heavy burden, and the calamities of life are a heavy load. Believers groan, being burdened with a body of sin, and because of the many corruptions remaining and raging within them, the death will, death will strip us of the clothing of flesh and all the comforts of life as well as end all our troubles here below. But believing souls shall be clothed with garments of praise and robes of righteousness and glory. The present graces and comforts of the Spirit are earnests of everlasting grace and comfort. And though God is with us here by his Spirit and in his ordinances, yet we are not with him as we hope to be. Faith is for this world and sight is for the other world. It's our duty and it will be our interest to walk by faith until we live by sight in spirit and in truth. This, this shows clearly the happiness to be, over, to be enjoyed by the souls of believers when absent from the body and when Jesus makes known his glorious presence. We are related to the body and to the Lord. Each claims a part in us. But how much more powerfully the Lord pleads for having the soul of the believer closely united with himself. Thou art one of the souls I have loved and chosen, one of those given to me. What is death as an object of fear compared with being absent from the Lord? For we walk and conduct ourselves in our course of life with reference to the things which are unseen and not with reference to the things that which are seen. We walk here in this fallen world by faith, in the belief of those things which we don't see. We believe in the existence of objects which are invisible and we are influenced by them. To walk by faith is to live in the confident expectation of things that are to come, in the belief of the existence of unseen realities, and suffering them to influence us as if they were seen. Amen and amen. Let's say that again. Suffering them to influence us as if they were seen. The people of this world are influenced by the things that they see. They live for wealth, honor, splendor, praise, for the objects which this world can furnish, as if they were there were nothing which is unseen. 
as if they ought not to be influenced by the things which are unseen. The Christian, on the contrary, has a firm conviction of the reality of the glories of heaven, of the fact that the Redeemer is there, of the fact that there is a crown of glory, and he lives and acts as if that were all real and as if he saw it all. The simple account of faith and of living by faith is that we live and act as if these things were true and suffer them to make an impression on our mind according to their real nature, which will be made known to us on the to us in the passing from here to there. So don't let the world take away your crown. Revelation 3, 11 says, I am coming soon. <laughs> Hold fast to what you have so that no one will take your crown. You know, if this seems beyond your comprehension, know that most of what we can understand is beyond all understanding. As it says in Philippians 4, 7, for the peace of God transcends all understanding. Remember the natural man does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. 1 Corinthians 2.14 Our natural body is sown in dishonor, but it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, but it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, but it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. So it is written, the first Adam became a living being. The last Adam gave a life-giving spirit. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 43 through 45. So do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe in me as well. In my Father's house are many rooms. And some translations say many, my, <clears throat> many mansions. His Father's house is a <laughs> mansion with many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you that I'm, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, will I come back and welcome you into my presence so that you can also be where I am? John 14, 1 through 3. We live on the shore of a vast, vast ocean of reality that none of us have seen. And we know it's there because we know God has said it's there. We know God has a vast creation of which we can barely even comprehend in the natural, let alone the spiritual. But one thing is for sure. Nature, the Bible says, is groaning in anticipation of the revealing of the sons of God. So nature itself knows the day is coming when 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 we will be revealed for who we were created to be. And when that happens, life will return to this fallen world in a way that we can't even imagine. And it will be restored to the glory that God created it. And in that, in that reality, all this pain and suffering that we see as see so difficult and hard will be seen as insignificant, just as Paul said, in comparison. Remember, the, there is meaning in everything, and that meaning will always be through all eternity for us to do one thing, and that is to enjoy God. Amen. Thank you for joining us for this Lion's Table. We hope this has been a blessing to you, and as always, we invite you to join us again next time.